Okay, so let's start with the peripherals. This one's the Low Free Flow 2 and I have the 84 key version. Honestly, this keyboard feels like something Apple would have designed if they ever made a mechanical keyboard. This one's the 84 key version, but it also comes with a 68 and 100 key variants. It has a stunning CNC aluminum body and when you place it beside Apple's products, the finish is impressively close. It supports tri-mode connectivity so you can switch between 2.4 GHz, Bluetooth, or wired USB-C depending on your setup. One thing to note though, the dongle doesn't have any storage slot, so make sure you don't lose it. The PBD double shot keycaps are shine through, available in black or white. I went for the white one to match the Apple aesthetic I'm going for with this setup. It's got built in flip out kickstands underneath and a touch sensitive bar for adjusting volume and screen brightness. It's a nice change from the usual knob style controls and honestly, I kind of prefer it. Beside that is the USB-C port for charging and connectivity and on the side, a subtle edge low free logo carved into a small notch. The switches are quite responsive too, and here's how they sound. Now, I decided to pair it with an equally interesting mouse, the Hypace, also from Lofree. While it's designed for gaming, I actually like using lightweight gaming mice for productivity as well. It features a transparent retro futuristic design that adds a nice touch of personality to an otherwise super clean setup. Under the hood, it's got dual 8K polling rate, a magnesium alloy frame, DPI from 100 to 40,000, and multiple connection options, wired, dongle, or Bluetooth. And just like the Flow 2, you can customize its settings through a web app. If you're looking for something different, a step away from the usual Apple keyboard and mouse combo, or even the Logitech MX Master line, this duo is a great pick for the design conscious. The next accessory I want to discuss is actually from today's sponsor, Ugreen. One of the most frustrating bottlenecks when you move to a compact system like the Mac Mini is storage. Upon getting it, I immediately almost filled up my 512 gigs of storage because I work with large audio and video files, and I'm not exactly willing to pay the high cost of a monthly cloud subscription just so I could back up these large file sizes. And that's where the Ugreen NAS DH2300 comes in. It's a NAS or a network attached storage and basically works just like iCloud or Google Drive, but it stores all your data locally and safely in your own drives. The cost of having a dedicated NAS at home versus a cloud subscription is way lower in the long run. The DH2300 is a two bay NAS, so you pop in two SATA drives and right away you can get up to 60 terabytes of storage, that's 30 terabytes per bay, to house everything from your archives, your active work files, and your media library. I'm a total noob when it comes to NAS, so I'm surprised how it's so easy to set this whole thing up and it can connect quickly via NFC. It's a pretty convenient device since it can also store my heavy 10-bit B-roll footages and because of its small form factor, it can be tucked neatly on your shelf, under your desk, or even on your desk itself. It fits the clean aesthetic studio space I like to keep. And one of the things I like about this is that you can actually back up your iPhone's camera roll directly to the NAS. Just download the Ugreen NAS app on the App Store, and from there, you can securely back up your files. It can also back up the time machine of any of your Mac devices. It's also got higher transfer speeds compared to using cloud backups. Up to 125 megabytes per second, you can basically transfer a 1 gig file in just a few seconds. And if you're worried about the drives failing, your files will be automatically copied to the second drive in real time if one of them fails. This is thanks to the RAID redundancy technology that the DH2300 has. And it also allows for multi-user sharing so you can permit other users in your household to access the NAS. So in summary, the Mac Mini pairs well with the Ugreen NAS Sync DH2300 to free up that SSD, clean up your workflow, protect your files, and keep your space looking intentional. Thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring today's video. If you'd like to check it out, I've left a link in the description and don't miss out on the 20% off promo this Black Friday. Next up is the docking system from Ulanzi Studio. Ulanzi recently launched their new studio line designed specifically for creators and creatives. And this pair of accessories doesn't just expand your Mac Mini sports, it literally transforms its look and functionality. Okay, so let's start with the cage system for the Mac Mini. It has a sleek industrial design inspired by the Mac Pro, giving your Mac Mini a much more premium desktop ready feel. The cage allows you to securely house your Mac Mini while keeping all the I.O. fully accessible. It also improves airflow, which is a subtle but important upgrade and it makes the power button easier to press, which is one of those small touches that makes the daily use smoother. 
Matching silver finish is a near-perfect complement to Apple's design language, and if you need access to the two front ports, the cheese grater cover pops off instantly thanks to a magnetic release, so you can quickly plug in accessories without removing the whole cage. Pair that with this docking station and suddenly your Mac Mini gains expanded connectivity and an optional SSD enclosure for additional storage. It's packed with USB, HDMI, Ethernet, and SD card inputs among others. And the real beauty of this combination is how it unlocks the Mac Mini's full potential. We can connect multiple displays, add external storage, and still keep your workspace clean and minimal. When used together, the cage system and the docking station don't just make your Mac Mini more versatile, they give it a high-end professional aesthetic while keeping everything functional and easy to access. So if you're a creator looking to upgrade your workflow, expand storage, or simply make your Mac Mini feel like a proper desk setup, then this combination is a serious win. Next up, let's talk about the Obspot Tiny Me 2 in Cloudwide. It's compact and minimal, so it won't clutter your desk or clash with the Mac Mini's sleek design, but don't let its size fool you. This little webcam packs impressive features. It shoots 1080p at 60 frames per second, so whether you're on Zoom calls, streaming, or recording content, your video comes out crisp, smooth, and professional. Okay, so we opened the Opspot Center and we are currently recording with the Tiny Me 2. This is how it sounds like when you're doing Zoom calls or you're just doing conference calls with just the onboard camera mic. We are shooting right now in 4K, 30 frames per second. This is how it looks like if you blur the background. Our dining area is pretty bad. <laughs> okay, what's really cool is you actually can shoot in portrait mode if you flip the webcam 90 degrees. So you can shoot content with it or any kind of like speaking sort of like video, but I would recommend that you use a microphone because I feel like the audio quality is not as good. But for calls, it's pretty okay. But for content, better to use a microphone. One of my favorite things is the AI auto framing and tracking. It keeps you perfectly centered even if you move around so you don't have to adjust the camera manually. Setup is effortless thanks to plug and play USB-C connectivity. Just plug it into your Mac and you're ready to go. No drivers or extra installs need. And of course, the cloud white finish matches the Mac Mini and your other peripherals, keeping your workspace cohesive and minimal. And since the Mac Mini doesn't come with a built-in webcam, the Obspot Tiny Me 2 is a stylish, reliable, and cost-friendly choice for online meetings. Lastly, I want to talk about my current monitor, speakers, and shelf setup. The monitor is a 27-inch ultrafine 4K from LG. This specific model is called the 27US500, and it's by far one of the cheapest and most accessible 4K monitors out in the market. I chose this one because of its white base and minimal footprint. It's sharp enough, but the connectivity is limited to just two HDMI ports and a display port. It's got a headphones port and a power port on the back, but that's about it. It's color accurate enough, but I would recommend a better monitor for that purpose. But for general everyday use, this is a valuable monitor. Monitor. I'm really saving up to get a studio display in the future, but for now, this will do. For my speakers, I use a pair of Canto U2s. I really wanted a pair of small white desktop speakers to go with a clean aesthetic. And I've owned these for more than a year now, and they still sound pretty great, but I have to admit that they lack some low-end punch. I do like them as reference speakers though, and they certainly sound good for the price. But more importantly, they fit well with the look of the setup. They don't have Bluetooth connection, unlike their counterparts from Audio Engine, but as desk speakers, they hold out pretty well. The shelf I'm using is from Rayco. This is the full length version with an updated walnut finish. It measures 116 cm in length and 23 cm in depth. It's crafted from 15 ply hardwood, has premium aluminum components, and underneath it is a modular mounting rail system. And this is where it gets interesting. I can actually mount my MagSafe holder and a tablet holder easily and saves a lot of desk real estate. To organize my small things, I also have a desk tray and valet tray tucked neatly inside the shelf. Both are also from Rayco. So these are just some of my curated picks to improve your Mac Mini experience coming into 2026. If you're planning to upgrade to the M5 Mac Mini, I'm sure these accessories might improve your experience as well. I hope you got some ideas from this video and be sure to like, subscribe, and share this with anyone who's also into tech. With that said, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!